What's going on, everybody? Thanks for coming in. Starting here shortly. Ryan, thank you for uh, jumping in today. Appreciate it. Hey, what's up, Rob? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. All right. So I got to tell everybody multiple times that we're being uh, we're recording this. So this is live or recording for the rules of uh, Clubhouse. But welcome, everybody, to Nashville Fire Radio, social media for the fire service. So uh, what we're doing here today is I wanted to talk to everybody about social media for fire service organizations or emer- emergency service organizations and some of the lessons that we have learned through National Fire Radio and how we've kind of conducted ourselves in the last three years and how that relates to emergency service organizations or anybody that's related to fire service because there's a lot of stuff going on out there that's being done right and there's a lot of stuff being maybe that could, could be improved upon um, especially when it comes to creating content and adding adding value to the emergency service organization. So that's kind of where I want the discussion to go or, you know, and we'll leave it open for that. But really quickly, um, you know, for as people start coming into the room, what are some of the things that does anybody feel, and, and if anybody in the audience wants to raise a hand and uh, get up here and talk, like that are, that are missing from emergency services, social media posts, in, in today's day and age or anything that they're they just want to add on or jump on with that i don't i don't know if it's what you know I, what i can say is missing um I, I think there's a lot of content out there that i guess if we're going to say what's missing in it it's you know whether it's a great photo or a great video um it might not be being, sh- uh, sh- being shared in the proper way or the or the copy that's going with the photo or the video isn't you know providing the direction of uh, of the post to to get the value noticed. Um, I think you know the biggest the biggest problem with with social media are the are the folks that don't look at really look at what they're uh, putting out there and looking at it more globally than just their little view and looking at how it can affect more than just themselves uh, but can affect their organization or the fire service as a whole. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think a lot of times that context gets gets lost. And, you know, I, I think you, like when you're posting for the social media for an emergency services organization or even on your own personal page or for a business, like that whole not thinking in a value-minded um, mindset. So not thinking about, Hey, like, how is this post today going to add value to what's going on here? You know, uh, the message that the organization is trying to, uh, uh, to portray, I, I think of a lot of, um, a lot of cities, you know, that come up on layoffs and all of a sudden the social media feed is nothing but, you know, you know, budget cuts kill, uh, you know, firefighters, firefighters aren't unsafe, et cetera, et cetera. But they don't, before that ever educate the public and what they're actually doing. And they're not, you know, they're, they're like, they may post pictures of fires, which is great. You know, it's good clickbait, but people want to pay attention to that. But are they really, are they really coming up with a plan to sell a message for that fire department? Are they coming up with a plan to add value to the community that they're serving and letting people know what services they truly offered? Because the public, like their best bet sometimes is going to be uh, horrible TV shows like 911 on Fox or, the Lone Star, whatever station, something. I don't know. They're just, my wife watches them sometimes, and uh, she's like, "It's so bad, you got to watch it." I'm like, "No, absolutely not." I think for me, Robert, just just personally, my biggest thing, and then maybe this is not even close to what you're looking for, but but I have to really pay attention to the emotion that I'm feeling at the time that these things kind of go through my head because. When I'm going through times that I'm frustrated with my department or my firehouse or whatever it is, and that kind of builds that that high ramped up emotion, it's I feel like it's a good thing because sometimes that kind of it pushes your passion and it, it just kind of it helps drive you. But you have to be very mindful of how that comes out, especially if you get into, you know, posting comments or posting some type of editorial or something, because I, I do that all the time. It's, it's hard for me to hide those emotions when I start 
getting into wordy comments. And so I have to really pay attention to passive aggressive, like backsided jabs, things like that. And so for me personally, that's one thing I have to really focus on is what what is my intentions of this post or my comment, whatever. What it, What's the true intentions of it? Is it going to be helpful for anybody? Is it, am I going about it in a way that is sarcastic and I'm going to completely, you know, disassemble my whole, you know, reasons for doing it? Because if I, if I'm putting a comment out that, that I feel like is a good comment that needs to be said, but I'm doing it in a sarcastic, you know, hateful way, you might as well just be talking nonsense because that's it's going to tear apart any good that that is there yeah and it doesn't add value which is always a you know because that's in the back of my mind i'm always thinking how are we adding value how is this adding value to the person how is this being positive because if we take if we really project anything negative it's just going to kind of take away from all that uh, david woodward i see you're up here on the stage um you know you, you have a, a a little thing that you're doing coming up in july that's kind of you know it's got a little bit of a, a following to it um actually kind of a big deal revolutionary fire tactics at the lake um, in Lake of the Ozarks, what uh, what do you what what do you see as you know this whole like content recreation, especially after we've gotten together on on making content and driving it for something like that for for your conference? Hey, uh, so I, I fully expect my little uh, radio walkie-talkie thing to start blabbing as soon as I say anything useful. Um, so. What I had to learn on all that, Rob, is um, that content, anything you create, it is a waste of a time to create content just to make content that has no meaning or no connection with anyone. You've got to, you have to b bring value to the content or it's just going to be noise. And um, early on when I started that social media for the, for the revolution, um, I would just try to get exposure and get noise and there was no thought behind any of it it was just it was just i'd post and i'd post and i'd post and i'd post and i'd try to stay in people's news feeds and i realized that i was really turning people off to it because there was nothing to it i was all i was all yap 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 and there was no substance to it so um i think that's a big key like like since i've met rob and we started kind of visiting on uh, adding value and it, uh, my, as my wife and I matured in how to handle things and started actually planning, uh, how things should look, then the, like the conference, for example, our social media took on an identity. So if you follow the revolution, you follow like that identity of who we are. Everything's personal for us. Everything I can put faces with everything. I can put names with everything. And I could put value on the things we're doing. And if not, it's just a waste of time. So that's, that's my two cents. So I think what Dave just said is the, is, is the key. All right. For if, if there's one thing that, that I think a lot of people don't understand, the, the making things uh, personal, providing content that people can relate to. I, I, like I run my agency's uh, Facebook page. And every, every post that we put up, we, we try to make relatable to people, not just in the fire service, but outside of the fire service. Because in the volunteer fire service, a good social media campaign is a huge um, recruitment tool. It's a tremendous recruitment tool. And, it, and you don't want 4,000 firefighters following your page. You want firefighters and community members and citizens and people and visitors. You want them following your page because those are your those are your potential volunteers down the road, your potential new members. And if all you're doing is posting, you know, fire photos or pictures of fire engines, uh, you know, fire apparatus. Yeah, sure. Firefighters get excited about that. But the public may not. The citizens may not. Your future volunteers may not they get excited by seeing the neighbor that they didn't know was a volunteer going to the firehouse every week and drilling and training and doing different things and, and learning what it is that we do and how we play such a vital part in the community. Ryan, I think that's a great point because 
a lot of, I think, and when it's firefighters who are running our social media pages, which the majority I think are, uh, I, don't, I don't really, I, I would imagine maybe some of the larger metropolitan departments hire somebody specifically on for social media, but for the most part, I'd say 99% is, um, is going to be, uh, you know, our own emergency services members. We're trying to, we're thinking about it from a firefighter's point of view and that you, you know, posting a picture of a fire or a video or something, and we're trying to get those likes from our own community. But you bring up a great point because you want to educate those, you know, those taxpayers, the the people that we're serving, the visitors, show them the content or show them what the organization's doing and educate them about the, the community. And also, I think a public, you know, safety uh, standpoint, whether it's a program on smoke alarms or something like that, I always find there's a, you know, a huge value from what I do at work and sharing those stories with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Part of, you know, a huge, huge part of it is, like, like you said, edu educating the public, right? If you're, if you're going out to referendum for a new piece of equipment or, I mean, it, you know, that education piece prior to, maybe it's been for years, you know, that you've been educating your community as to how hard everybody works, how dedicated everybody is, how much time goes into what's being done. It, it, it can really pay you in dividends when you need when you need something. So let's talk for a second about what that actual content looks like, because I think when we start, you know, we, we get into the weeds here. But really, the one thing that you all miss is is what like we say, like what do we what do we share? What do we take a picture of? What do we how do we how do we formulate that post? And I think that. We have to, you know, so kind of get that that taxpayer view or that, you know, the, everybody else other than a firefighter who's looking. We got to start putting ourselves in their shoes and have that empathy, and also to remember to explain stuff. Um, I think like I've had a lot of success with, um, like showing showing pieces of the apparatus or, or or certain tools and kits like the ring removal kit, and following it up with, uh, you know, if we're at our local emergency room and we because we get called down there all the time to remove rings. And we kind of make it like a, you know, like a, a fighter plane in World War II getting another, you know, enemy fighter and marking it on the side. We say, you know, another ring removal from, you know, the Fairview Professional Firefighters XYZ. And we have the, the kit and we really go into the, into the explanation because I think that brings out that value of what it is. And then the public sees it and they go, oh, they're not just doing house fires. This is, this is awesome. Or that uh, the other day we had, um, you know, a great one was we found a lost dog. And that thing grew legs. Uh, the, well, the dog already had its legs, but the post itself grew legs because people, you know, man, they wanted to find the owners, and they did. And it, it was a huge success story. Um, so I, I, I kind of think, in the, you know, when we're out there looking at this, we we have to start planning that content, but also recognizing what that good content looks like. Tara, I know you're up here on the stage, and you've been. You've been really hitting it on social media, um, and uh, you know, as, as we were talking about before, you know, everybody's seeing your presence everywhere. What are some of the things for you that you're, you know, from a, a firefighter business, you know, trying to t capture the attention of, of people that are out there? What are you seeing that's working for you? What is what's not working for you? You know, can can you kind of touch on some of that stuff? Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um... One of the things that I really keep in mind um, anytime that I'm that I'm posting and it's just, you know, it just comes organically to me now, but I really make sure I stay in my lane. I know I'm not a firefighter. I, I don't pose as one. I don't try to speak your guys' language. Um, I do try to connect with the community as best I can, though. I, and I try to um, speak to um, speak to what I know. Um, I have an area of expertise. My area of expertise is post scene firefighter decon um, with these personal care products. So I try to speak to those and let people know how important those are, but also just connecting on a human level. Um, I'm also not out there being the decon police, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, I think it's really important to find that balance, stay in your lane and educate on the things that you know. Um, and just truly just build that relationship with your audience, like know who your audience is. Um, on my page, it's mostly firefighters, some firewives. Um, you guys though may have a large you know, community presence. So truly know who's following you. 
um, and engage with them in the way that um, that they, you know, that they want to be spoken to. That you know, think about it from their side of of um, you know, if I'm just posting up pictures of soap and they don't know what it is, then there's no point. Um, but if I'm, you know, posting facts about how my products work and how, you know, when you come out of a fire, this is how, you know, toxins get on your skin and just doing the educational piece along with mixing and other things. Cause again, I don't want to be the decon police. Um, I don't know if that makes, that's making any sense, but I just think that really connecting with your audience is, is the best way to go. And telling a story, because I think when we tell a story where, you know, that that's really, because if, if it looks like a, uh, you know, it, from your end on, on, on your business or even from the fire service end in an emergency services organization, people are going to spot a sale. But if we're telling a story and we're doing that educational component, there's a huge, like now that we're adding value. And yeah, that's absolutely. a big, big thing. Also, you talked about knowing your audience and it kind of brings me up to a, another thing that I wanted to touch on is other platforms that are out there because everybody knows Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and there's, you know, success and each one of them has their own nuance to, to our, you know, emergency services organizations that are out there. But I think the one thing we miss is we don't look into those demographics to see who's, who's looking at our content and like why, like a lot of times people say like, well, why are, why do you have a TikTok? You know, why, why is that something that we should be involved in? And I say, look around the firehouse and you can see people in their phones on, on TikTok watching uh, videos. It's another way to capture attention and it's just a different type of content to make for um, for individuals that are out there. And another uh, thing that you you brought up, Tara, was talking about staying in your lane. And there's often times there's things with National Fire Radio that I don't know anything about. Um, so like I'll rely on Jeremy to kind of, because if, if I don't know, like I, it does us no good to post something um, that I'm going to make myself and, and us look like an idiot for. Uh, but however, it brings me to a, like a team approach to social media, creating content and having everybody on the same page, because a lot of times it's just one person, you know, that's doing this. There might be only one individual and then something's going on. We can't access that social media. So I think a team approach is, is really a huge value to doing all of this and, and, and getting into that, uh, into that social media um, standpoint. Um, I, sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. Uh, so creating content is, oh, get Jeremy up here. Creating content is something that I think is a, uh, is a huge struggle for people and having a plan for that and actually putting it down on paper is oftentimes a help because it'll, it'll put that blueprint out there. I know down in the audience is uh, Melissa Lawler and, and, and she's a fire commissioner in, in Pleasant Valley. She's a, you know, a midwife and she's actually the mother of one, one of my firefighters as well. And she came in and did a whole, whole thing with us on cancer and cancer prevention for, uh, I, think, I believe it was in October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So it was important. We bought the subject matter expert and we shot some video content. It was something that was just kind of outside the box and we had a huge success with it. So it was uh, very, very beneficial to everybody that was out there. Jeremy, welcome up. Hey, guys. Uh, just want to hop in real quick. You know, there's a couple other things in here, too. You know, I've talked to a lot of people that are in this room and, uh, you know, you there's a couple of things when it comes to social media, right? Knowing your audience is huge, right? Knowing your mission. But the one thing is this, it's hard work. You know, that everybody is today looking for instant gratification in delivering whatever it is. Everybody's always looking for the answer now. Social media is a long-term play. You know, how do I get a viral video? I don't know. Nobody knows, right? It's the mood. It's the, it's the content. It's what happened that day what happened tomorrow like everybody wants everything to happen quickly and the problem is is that doesn't happen you can have it you can have a quick impact based on a piece of content but at the end of the day it comes and goes as quick as as you know everyone knows and so you know the best thing to do and what drives people crazy is you know when they they look at you know dave hit on it before when i hopped in earlier and i was listening to it and he's talking about bringing value and understanding that you know, the value approach 
is important because you can't on social media make it about yourself. You have to try to bring value to the consumer because if you don't bring the value to the consumer, they're going to check out. Now, we at like National Fire Radio, we walk a line because we're also personalities in the fire industry that you know we're looking to um, continue the conversation on. So we have to do a little bit about ourselves, but we also uh, have to make sure that a lot of our content represents our viewership, our followers, the people that watch our social and how important that is. And so you do have to bring that value. But quantity is also equally as important. You know, and, you know, if you're putting up one post a day, the amount of interaction and uh, people seeing it is is nil. You need to consistently work at putting content into any feed, whatever platform it is. And then you have to have engagement on that platform, meaning you have to follow up your social media post and engage the community. If you're willing to put something out there and people want to ask a question about it, you, if you have the audacity that you don't think you have to get back to them, you're going to lose. You have to engage your people. Like salesmanship, somebody asks a question, they open the door for you to close. And so what you have to do is very easily capitalize on that opportunity. When somebody asks a question in the feed, interact with them. Send them a DM. Create a community. When we were at SnapTight the last few days, I kept harping on SnapTight O's to become a member of the community. Start the conversation, keep the conversation going. And it's so important to engage. And if you don't engage and you think a simple Instagram post or Facebook post or a video that you hemmed and hawed on for two weeks to put up because the lighting had to be perfect and the angle had to be right and and this and that, if you worry about all that, by the time you post it, you've already lost. So sometimes quantity is important. You need to keep the product in the feed. So here's the thing, right? I'm a big fan of Gary Vee. A lot of what started me, and if you're not sure who Gary Vaynerchuk is, and I give him all the credit in the world because he really fired me up to get National Fire Radio started because I saw a hole in the industry that I thought we needed to go after that everybody was missing. There's only a few people that get it. You know, Elkhart Brass is one company that gets it. I think Chris was in here before. That is a company that gets how to get into the community, be a part of the community and conversation, and that is how you build brand and awareness. And uh, and they do that very well. And there's just a few other organizations, companies, and groups that do it well. And so, you know, it is a long-term play. It's a hustle. It's a lot of work. And, you know, when we started National Fire Radio three years ago, a lot of, a lot of pages popped up after us. And you know how many are left? Not many. You know why? Because it's a grind. It's a consistent grind. And for us, it's a long-term play to bring education and awareness to the American Fire Service by promoting the betterment of it. And that's a mission. That's not a short-term gain. I don't give a crap if I sell a T-shirt or send out a sticker. It's all about creating an environment and being part of the community so that in 25 years I can step away from it if I can. And that's what's, and that's what's important. For me, and so you have to know what your mission is, and your social media has to certainly fall in line with that. But it is hard work, and you need to craft the plan. And content and engagement and value is important, but so is quantity, and so is consistently being there. It's hard work. If you want to get into it, do it. On what Rob's talking about with individual departments and companies and promoting your local fire company, your station, your district, anything. It's all about community engagement and sending the right message consistently. Education and bring value. Educate the public about what you do. Educate the borough fathers, the the township officials, the mayor and council, along with the tax base and taxpayers. Let them know you're out in the community. Show them what you're doing. Create an environment where people want to support you. That's the biggest part about all of it. And so there's just so much to it, and it's a great topic. And you can take social media for the emergency services and break it down into so many different categories and then just dive in and go after it. Um, And I think Rob is, uh, you know, we were talking about it, and and this is going to be a good angle for Rob to really go after and help educate people. Um, Education is key. Let's educate our people. Let's promote our fire service, and let's make us look good because there's too many of us out there making us look bad. So we got to get out there and make it look good. But I'll take the box, and I'm out of here. 
and to you know bounce off of what Jeremy said too, it's it's all about documenting. You know, if we're documenting the story, we're documenting what we're doing. You know, whether it's in that fire station or on our business, we document what's happening, and we put that up there. There's value to it. Like you know, we're at the firehouse. Like Brian's at the firehouse on a on a on the weekly night where they're doing their checks and he's taking pictures or he's shooting video content of the guys running the saws. And then he's putting that piece out there that says, Hey, like the members are doing this because of X, Y, Z. That's all that documentation. And that helps us get things out there for the customer, the taxpayer, whoever that viewer, whatever we're target audience, we're trying to see. And it's so important. Um, even, you know, Dave Woodward talked about it before with, you know, when he's talking about just throwing, you know, putting content up to put content up, you know, when he started documenting and he told that story of revolutionary fire tactics at the lake, it, it really, you know, that's when he started to see the traction. And I think that's just really, really important. Rob, you bring up a great point, man. I just want to hop in on that. You, you bring up an incredible point. You're creating content all day long. So if you document and not create, you have endless content to share. And if you're doing it right all the time, if you're and not that we're doing it right all the time, but but if you if you have the betterment and the drive and push to always do right, the content you're going to create from documenting your daily activities, documenting your training events, documenting the goods, the bads and everything in between, then it's authentic and authenticity is exactly what people want to see. One hundred percent document don't create because if you're sitting there trying to create that's when people get stymied all the time oh my god i can't you know five to seven posts a day on different social media i can't come up with that much content yeah but all day long you were doing things that represent you and your brand and the fire service and your ems agency and and your company and everything in between i mean that you know what i'm saying so it's just that easy um it's just that easy and i in the documentation aspect of all this, we can show people everything. Like there's times where I document, like just, you know, you'll see something pop up in our story about shipping packages off for people's orders that come in. It's might not seem significant, but now like we're, we're letting people know that we're here, you know, that, and I think like I said, it's just, it's, it's great. And the other thing you have to do is you have to, you ha like we talked about it before, but you have to get out there and put that content out. You have to execute that content and that documentation. So whatever that post is coming up, whatever our plan is, you know, whether it's getting a residential smoke alarms uh, program going into our neighborhood for the community, or it's making people aware about an issue that's affecting our fire service organization, such as a staffing issue or maybe an increase in call volume due to something else, you've got to be able to put that um, information out there. And a lot of people like Jeremy kind of touched on it, but they, they'll, they'll second guess themselves or they'll be nervous about it. And we have to have that courage to take that step to um, put that out there. But it also involves trust with the organization you're working with. And I know that's been a huge hurdle for me where I work is because there's people who don't, that it, it, it's a unfamiliar area for them. So, you know, it becomes a, and, and I don't want to say an issue of trust, but they're, they're very cautious about it. But once we put ourselves out there, you know, it, it ends up being a win for the organization. You know, one thought that I had, you guys, as you're you're talking about, um, it, it it's a lot of work, um, as we all know that that run these social media pages, and and it is important to get multiple posts out there a day and have them be engaging, and also get back to everybody. Um, I try not to let a comment go unanswered. DMs definitely don't go unanswered. Um, all emails get answered as soon as I see them. That's a lot of work in itself. Keeping up with the posting is a lot of work in itself. And um, it's wonderful if you can have a team. And I tell people, and I don't know if you guys agree, but if you don't have a team, focus on one channel then. Um, I usually recommend just because a lot of the fire service is on Instagram, post to Instagram, keep up with your Instagram, have that, that backup Facebook page where it automatically posts to Facebook where you can ignore it if you need to um, and just, just reply to comments as they come in there. But, but focus on one channel if that's all you can do so that you can be um, active and engaging on that channel so you're not spreading yourself too thin and, and not engaging with your audience. And I think a good point to that, Tara, is like, you you know, there's a lot of interoperability between platforms. So if I share something on Instagram, I can 
scroll it right over to the Facebook, but I can also create a schedule to go back and check that Facebook if I have to. And, and, and that's where I think we get ourselves, we start getting ahead of ourselves when it comes to if you're by yourself or you're doing, doing it one or two other, two other people and you're getting that following is making sure you set the time to go back and, and, and look at that Facebook page. If you're primarily focusing on Instagram, but do pop in there because there's, there's great stuff that can be coming in there and you don't want to miss out on it, but it's all about time management. And, you know, I, I try to set a reminder for myself sometimes just to go and look back because I primarily focus on the Instagram because it's easy and everything goes right over. But then I, you know, I'll get that notification that there's a message sitting there and somebody has a question and that's that opportunity to interact with them. And I don't want to miss that either. One, one thing, one thing I want to add to that is I, I still, to some degree, believe in uh, quality over quantity. And I understand if you're running it from a business perspective, you're looking at algorithms and you're looking at how, how can you get your posts in front of more faces. But when you're, when you're looking at it from an organizational standpoint, you know, where you're representing an agency maybe, um, you're better off creating one really good post than half a dozen garbage posts. You know, because those garbage posts are not going to help you, your message. They're not going to help you grow your, grow your followers. Um, you know, so for the people that might be listening to this that are doing something on the smaller stage, or, you know, that they see all this talk of algorithms and you got to post to your story X amount of times a day. You got to post to your wall this amount of times a day. You, you know, th that's all great, but, but don't get hung up on the, on the numbers of it either. You know, I mean, look, my page has org organically grown. It's, it's, it's about a message for me. It's about, you know, providing value to, to the people that, that, you know, that I relate to. Um, there's days where, honestly, I can't come up with a post. I can't, you know, I, I, I maybe I have a great picture, or I, but I just can't put great copy to it. You know, I'm looking at some of the guys in the room like I'm looking, uh, you know, I see Mickey down there from Top Floor Tactics. I mean, those guys, I look at their, at their copy sometimes, and I'm like, holy shit, like, you know, the, the verbiage is just, like, awesome. You know, and I'm like, why, I can't come up, why can't I come up with that today, you know? So don't get hung up on that stuff. 100%, Brian. Hey, Chief, Chief if, I could, if I could hop in real quick on that, um, I, I agree with that to an extent, but understand this. It's 100, your content is 100% subjective. So what you, what you might deem as quote unquote garbage might bring something of value to somebody else that you might not value. And so I don't know, I don't know what you mean by garbage, but my, my point is this, when I was talking about quantity before, right? Is that it's, it's about engagement and I don't know what hits right all the time. And so you, like Mickey does an incredible job, but he also puts two weeks of research and know-how into his post, but that's who he is and the type of person he is and the type of page he runs, not to speak for him. But the, but the thing is, is that the content that's put out, what you choose to put out on your page needs to represent you, and I get that. But to discredit everything other than a long thought out post as garbage, I tend to agree with that. I tend to disagree with that because all your content you're putting out is subjective, and it's based upon what you believe you like. But you don't know what other people in your community might like. That's where it's important to show different aspects of yourself as a person and character and uh, personality. And you might not think that that's going to hit because it might not be 100% in line with your mission-driven statement. But you know what? Everybody that follows your content might be there for different reasons, and therefore that content is subjective. So don't be afraid to do that either, though. That's well, all. Well, yeah. Let me. So let me define. So, let me define garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me define garbage. I I try I try to work very hard, whether I'm posting for my personal stuff or for my agency. That when I take a photo and I put it out there, I look at that photo. I want to make sure guys have their PPE on right. Guys are doing, you know, like there's nothing in the, there's nothing that I'm looking at as myself and going, 
I don't want to put this out there because it's not professional. It doesn't, it doesn't shed a proper light on us. So what I'm saying is don't take something that you know isn't representing you in the way that you want to be represented. And just because that's the only thing you have, throw it out there because you feel like you've got to post four times today. That, that's what I'm defining as garbage. Oh, for sure. That's just good PR, though. I think that, you know, us looking at things and making sure that it falls in line um, with the morals and values of the fire service and uniform standards and all of that kind of stuff. Um, one of the little known facts about me is I actually used to um, run the Go Army social channels and grew those pretty significantly back in the day and had a team of people that would um, post to those channels and it was a lot to keep up with um, being one of the only people who had military experience, making sure that all of those uniforms were correct and that um, everything was, you know, folded correctly and nobody was um, out of standards when posting. Um, but we've still posted so much per day. It's just looking at that stuff and it's just good PR. It's just making sure that that you're not posting that garbage. I totally get yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, Jer Jeremy and I have talked about this before, and I, I know a page the size of the pages that those, that Rob, that you and Jeremy run, that, you know, you firefighters are going to nitpick every little freaking thing that they could potentially nitpick, you know? You could, you could put the best content out there uh, with, the, with an incredible amount of value, and if some guy sees uh, one... Brian is still there. I think Brian. Stay there you go. Yeah, I'm just saying if you're trying to, uh, if you're, you know, stay consistent with what you're doing and just don't, just don't post because you feel you have to. And one of the other things that, you know, we talk about Gary, Gary V a lot and, and Jeremy turned me on to it. But I think the other thing for everybody to remember is like, yeah, we, we are the, the, you know, I guess a larger social media page, but the focus being for, fire departments that are out there, emergency services organizations that may not be taking advantage of social media correctly. It's that whole, uh, you know, I, and I think of the, 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 the saying that Gary Vee uses is jab, 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 right hook. And it's, you know, when we're thinking about that content, we're, we're putting out these small, small pieces and then boom, we deliver the message, you know, and, and he talks about it from a marketing perspective and selling products. But for us as emergency responders, you know, we can build something up and then boom, we hit them with that that information. And I think that's a, you know, a huge, huge, uh, huge tool to use. So, you know, an, an example of that for emergency services organizations could be, you know, something as simple as like what we talked about before, Melissa and I doing, uh, you know, stuff for my own fire department on, on cancer prevention. And every, every day we were putting out one or two pieces of content on stuff that we can do. And then we have a, a you know, a bigger final message that really hits home to, you know, resources, uh, that we can do, that we can get out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, and just you know, great conversation coming out. Um, what else? What does anybody have any questions down in the audience or or anything like that? By all means, you know, raise your hand, come on up, and and feel free to uh, jump in the conversation. I think personally, for me, and this is something that I've talked to a few of you up on stage about is. Jeremy and and uh, Chief Sala were discussing the message and, and all that and that's you know, I I've kind of taken a step back from an area of, of what I've really enjoyed here lately because I feel like a part of me is missing right now I don't know what it is you know I've, I've, had, I've went through some things that at my department that have almost taken a piece of me away and and although I don't feel that that's completely gone. I mean, I'm obviously still on these things, trying to to share what I have and trying to learn from others and trying to gain some of it back. But I, I've taken a step back because I don't want to be somebody that just kind of goes through the motions to say that, well, the it's still going. Uh, I, I didn't stop. I, I feel like it's a, a personal accountability almost that if I'm not passionate about it, if it's not just something that is screaming to, to be shared, it, it's hard for me to, to really keep going. And, and so that being the case right now, that's why I've taken a step back in some areas. And, 
and hopefully that'll kind of piece by piece come back together and and clubhouse is definitely doing a good job of of kind of being a band-aid for now until i get there but that's just a kind of a different angle is is i i i feel a personal just i I don't know i I am not going to be just throwing stuff out there because that's what i do I, i want to truly feel it came from my heart and it came from you know wanting to do good things and so that that's just the, like a personal story for me jeremy i'm listen man you you know you and i we've known each other now for quite some time and uh and so on and and i you 100 percent. like everything you just said there is 100 percent. and you know like we've talked about there's highs and lows man just like in your personal life just like in the firehouse i can guarantee you the amount i mean the amount of conversations i have with people about the highs and lows of this industry and everything that goes with that, everybody goes through it, you know? And now the the crazy part about it is, is that the people that are in here and the people that are running pages and putting content out there because it's bettering the job, we still have our own highs and lows too. And so there are days I don't feel like doing a damn thing. I just, we just worked literally for two weeks straight on a huge project. And I am wiped out. And yesterday, for the first time in a long time, I got home, and I didn't work on a single freaking thing, man. I literally turned it all off. This weekend, turning it all off. I need to reset. I need to clear my head. I need to fall in love with it again. I'm always in love with it, but I need to fall back in love with it sometimes. And, and that's a real conversation that a lot of people struggle with. And that's not just social media. That's the fire service, that's friendships, that's spouses and children. We're always in love, but you got to fall back in love with it sometimes too. And, you know, I, I just challenge you and the others that put out great content. I challenge you guys to really understand and appreciate how valued you are. Because even on your worst day, even on your worst day, probably having a, a worse day than you, And your willingness to put out a piece of content that represents your love and passion will set you apart, and you might pick that person up for the day. And what's crazy is none of us asked for it. None of us asked for it. But when you're willing to put yourself into a social media place where people can see you and you're 100% transparent and authentic and you are who you are, people relate to you more than ever. And you have this crazy thing where people believe in you and you make an impact in their lives every single day. And that is a burden. And then it goes to the conversation of, do I really want to carry that burden? Do I need, did I really want that burden? And then you have to have that internal conversation with yourself and say, shit, I didn't know that this was going to go the way it went. And now I'm somebody that people look to. I'm somebody that people lean on. And it makes you push, it makes you either push harder or you start to turn away from it. And I'll tell you that the people I know and the relationships, I've met some of the most amazing people in the last three years of my lives that without National Fire Radio, I would have never met these people. And so the value of that outweighs any bad day I'm having. And the friendships I've made and the acquaintances I've made and the education I've got in the last few years outweighs the shittiest day I'm having because at the end of the day, somebody's having a worse day than me. And if I'm willing to follow my heart and put out a piece of content that represents the authenticity of myself and my love for the job and it betters them, it's a freaking home run. It's a win. And we'll win every single time. And I don't mean my personal win. It's a win for the fire service. It's a win for the job. It's a win for keeping the passion alive and that light flickering in one more person. And that's what it's all about. We can't let the mission die we can't let the fire service crumble because we're getting too wrapped up with ourselves these days and not enough care for the job and and that is a real conversation to have um and rob i'm sorry to derail this from the the inner you know the the social media side but it's just that's all i think that's all part of it too the 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 social media people and that are making uh an, an incredible push to bring value also need to recognize that their willingness to do that does not come unrecognized by people like me. And, uh, and so, you know, Jeremy, you know, you're going to have ups and downs. Amen. But your message is good. Your leadership message group is great. 
You are pushing for the betterment of the job. And you know what? I promise you, brother, as much as you might be in a low or in ebbs and flows, I promise you there's going to be some big highs coming for you, too. And uh, and I challenge you to stay with it, push forward, you know, take that time you need, reset, recharge, and then get your stuff going again and make that shit happen because guys like me depend on you to make this job better. We need to drop the mic button in here. <laughs> 100%. And that's the thing. I think that's it. I think it's showing up every day and just trying to help people, trying to help firefighters, trying to help this community. Um, business or not, just show up to try to help people. Don't, you know, focus on selling or focus on, you know, the hard sale of recruitment or whatever. Focus on trying to help people and educate people. And if you're showing up every day just trying to help, I think that's uh, – that's where we're all able to make a difference. When it comes to social media, just have a real conversation with yourself. Why am I doing it? Am I trying to promote myself? Am I trying to sell something? Am I trying to promote uh, my training company or my product? Am I there for myself and my own personal growth? Am I there to make money? You have to have a real conversation when it comes to social media. You have to have a real conversation about yourself and why you're there because if your mission listen you can be there to sell a product that's fine you can be there to sell your training company that's fine but make sure that's your mission and you're doing things in line with that mission but if you want to become part of a community only to sell something you're not there to be part of the community you're there to sell something and so you can't lose track of that because that's when people get black eyes. That's when your authenticity suffers. And that's when your social media hits the can and people see right through it. Plain and simple. And so you got to have that conversation. If you're willing to put yourself out there, which was a huge conversation I had to have with myself when we started gaining some traction and the growth was starting to happen quickly for us in the very beginning, I said to myself very quickly, I'm like, am I going to be able to do this? Am I doing it for the right reasons? And I have found over the last few years that more and more it has fueled me to do even more outside of my own personal growth. Because, listen, at the end of the day, National Fire Radio has made me a better person. It's made me some money. It's given me a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. But I'm a, I'm a guy that pushes through all that because the mission truly for me is I want to be able to sit in the beaches of Bali or Costa Rica and tell you, I made a difference in the American Fire Service because I loved it, and it was a huge passion for me, and I get to never wear shoes again and sit in the sand. And that, to me, is my mission. That's my mission. Now, whether I have $100 in my pocket or $100 million in my pocket, I don't really give a shit about that. What I care about is making an impact and making a difference. And that's why I really started this, and that's why I grabbed Rob early on and said, Rob, I'd love for you to take the ride with me, and let's do this. And, uh, and you, so you in social media creation and refer back to Rob's conversation, whether it's about, you know, your local fire company and promoting it on social media, all the way up to de determining you want to start a social media page and content forum, whatever it is, figure out your mission up front, because that will help you decide how you craft your plan and move forward. What type of reputation, who do you want to be? How does my content and behavior on social media represent who I am. And when you can get through those questions and you have a real conversation with yourself, you will do just fine in whatever that mission is. There's that mic drop button that we need again. Yeah, I think the I think the mission you're talking about there, that that I like to refer to that as your target. You know, if if you don't have a mission, and this goes I think about it a lot as far as my my crew, you know, being a station officer, but it goes with what you're talking about too, Jeremy. But if we don't have that mission, then what are we aiming for? What, how do we know where we're going? And if we don't know where we're going, how do we know how to get there? You gotta you gotta have that mission, and, and like you said, and I completely agree that that's gotta come first. It, it has to be your first step is figuring out the mission of whatever topic you're you're talking about and so that that will give you a target to shoot for and then everything else you can aim at that target and that, that's one of the reasons why today like i wanted to have this conversation to start it because there's a bunch of you know there's a lot of things that are out there where i see people who don't they're not identifying that they're that mission and they're not even coming close to hitting the target because they don't have one so they're just posting stuff and then they're not 
I don't want to say they're not getting the traction that they want, but they could be so much more effective at delivering that message if they have that uh, that that target to focus on and and they're putting their efforts that way. Is there um, and like I said, any questions from anybody? I got to remind everybody that uh, with Clubhouse we're recording this live, so it's uh it's being recorded for the uh, service agreements and everything else there, all the legal stuff. We are recording this. Rob, I think one one last thing to maybe close out on, and I didn't mean to hop in here no, and really do this today. I, I, I just, I, I think the the one conversation is very much this: it is a long term play. If you're in any of this for instant gratification or anything instant to help yourself or anything like that, you're wrong. It's not going to happen. Everything in life is a long term play. Everything is about patience and everything is about as much work as you put into it is what you will get out of it. My personal satisfaction, the way I sleep at night is because I know that I'm putting everything I can into this and I believe in everything that we've done for it. And you got to be able to do that and you got to be able to understand that. And so people have to understand that nothing comes easy in life. Everything's hard work, whether it's your career in a firehouse, your career in selling soap, or running a social media page, or anything in between, even your family. It's a long-term play. It's a long-term investment. Shit doesn't happen overnight, and we need to really educate people that that is fact. That is fact, and you got to get over this immediacy that everything should happen right away, and you want instant gratification, instant success. You need to put money in your pocket so you'll sell yourself today for the money today instead of you know the long-term play of putting more in the bank for tomorrow. And those are those things that has to you just have to understand in life. It's a long term play and it's all about hard work. People think social media is easy. I'm going to go sell on so- social media. I'm going to go do this on social media. I challenge all of them. They'll fizzle out in the first couple of weeks. So it's a long term play. And, you know, there's a lot of good and a lot of great resources and a lot of great people out there to inspire you and to push you and to help you because everybody's going to have a lot of questions and execution and how to do things, and there's a lot of support out there, but you got to do the hard work to go find it and push yourself if you really want to get into the social media game. And it's okay to make mistakes because that's part of the process and learning all this. Everybody's worried about being perfect. Every Every single day. Lou, I see you jumped up on stage. You got something for us, brother? Uh, Yeah, I mean... What it, what Jeremy said is is complete, one hundred percent true. But you know the one thing is you know from the couple organizations, Rob, that you know who I work for, that uh, they're not into the social media. They don't. They haven't grasped grasped social media. They haven't accepted it yet. So you know my my Instagram page. You know it's ninety percent fire stuff. You know and then I throw a little bit of family stuff on there. But the fire stuff, it's kind of incognito to who I work for. Or, you know, when we've done it, like I'll, some of the stuff that's posted is stuff, video taken maybe a year ago, six months ago. And then I got to remember what we did there and describe it just so I can kind of backdoor the social media policies for the fire department I work for and the other agency I work for because, you know, they're kind of stringent on that stuff. And that's something people got to worry about. And, you know, that's actually a really good point because there's a, there's a lot of times where organizations, you know, and I, in my own personal opinion, I think that's it's a huge detriment that they don't get involved. But for us that are out there creating content, you have to have that creative uh, workaround to get around some of those policies that are out there. You know, and like you said, getting videos and, and having to kind of, I guess, you know, catalog that content for later down the road so you can put it out there. It's a, it's a huge undertaking. Well, I mean... How, is it? Do you have a process that you're comfortable sharing with us, and how you do that? Or, uh, really, it's you know, at the firehouse. I, you know, I'll take a lot of pictures during training or whatever. I try not to get the department name in the video or the picture that I'm taking, or I try to make it as uh, as general as possible. When I'm uh, teaching for the other organization, the, the other uh, organization I work for, uh, I just try to get nothing that's I don't tag where I am I don't you know say what I'm doing you know it's just I'll get far away shots of the students that are there that we're teaching don't ta- I you know I don't tag anybody you know if I got it like right now COVID's a big thing so 
uh, the one organization, if they're not in a mask right now, we could get jammed up and possibly, you know, as a part-time instructor, I could get fired for not being COVID compliant with a mask. So if, you know, if I take a video and there's not a, someone with a mask on there, I don't post it. I'll probably post it a year from now and not say when it, when it was taken because then, you know, it is what it is. Then they got to go dig in to figure out where, when and how it was taken. But, you know, it's, it's just these workarounds that are tough that you have to do when you have organizations that don't support or don't see the benefit of social media, especially in 2021. Yeah, exactly. But unfortunately, we did it to ourselves. I mean, the, the lack of common sense that people have these days is unbelievable. And holding holding individuals accountable is, you know, is like non-existent these days. And so we, we killed ourselves in the early days of social media. We killed ourselves because everybody hopped to it and thought they needed to share every little piece of content that they had. And nobody used or exercised any common sense. So departments had to throw up barriers to protect themselves. And now more than ever in this climate that we live in, I mean, if you hopped in earlier when Rob did a sound check on this with the mixing board and you listen to that, you know, 20 minutes of conversation, like now more than ever, you got to protect yourself. So, Lou, I agree with you, brother. And the problem is the job's going to suffer because of it, because we have guys that have incredible content to put out and share, but they're so guarded they can't do it. They can't do it. And I don't blame them. They have to protect themselves. They have to protect their careers, their families, their pensions. And I, I agree. And that's where that common sense approach comes in. And it's, it's refreshing to hear. I'm glad you brought this point up because too many people lose track of that. And they, and they think that they're invincible. And, and you're not. And you can't throw away. You can't throw away what you've built for yourself and your family and everything in between because you're an idiot and lapsed in judgment that you wanted to post a picture of a car accident with dead people or something just outrageous that most common sense people would say, are you out of your, like, I would never do that. I wouldn't even take the picture, let alone share it. But there's people out there that sensationalize everything, just like the media. And so, yeah, I agree, brother. That's a good conversation. Rob, mark that down because that's something to go into for departments that have hard social media policies, people that don't get it, the common, the lack of common sense in posting and all of that in between. That's a real, that's a really good conversation Lou. i'm glad you brought that up thank you brother yeah no problem hey i gotta jump we got some training we gotta do we got some probies that uh i gotta get cleared on a rig so i'm definitely awesome Ta- hey. yeah lou take some pictures and share them on social yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> thanks lou all right guys take care melissa i saw you jumped up here do you have uh something for us yeah, I do have something to say. Thank you. And I also, I admire Jeremy so much. Every time he talks, I'm like, I can't even jump in and say what he has to say, like what he does. He's so authentic. And whenever he talks, I'm like, you are right on on everything. Um, anyway, what Lou had to say was kind of what I wanted to get in on say. And I run a fine line in my fire department because as a commissioner, I have to be in charge of writing all these policies. And we just passed another social media policy that had to really get in depth and stringent because I have members who are doing that posting that are, you know, putting the, the department on the line. And so, you know, it's, it's a fine line, but I also run our social media for our district and our department. So it's like back and forth on what I have to do. Um, I found this past year has been extremely challenging with COVID. Um, I, I run, I have permission from most of the chiefs here in, in my area that I can go to their fire scenes and take photos. So for me, when I post about these photos, I have to, re- I can't post anything anymore without masks on. I have to do, my shots are from people from behind now. I'm like focusing on like a fire picture instead of the full scene. It's been very challenging. Um, and, and what Jeremy was saying too, is that, you know, um, when you're coming in there and you're being authentic and you're delivering the message, it's that's when you're getting the most um, the most run and people are following and they're and they're really engaging with you. But then what everybody else has been saying, you have to have the time to put in on this social media because there are there are days I, I just don't have time to do this with posting and keeping up with it. Um, but again, and also what Lou was saying, I have a file 
full of thousands of photos that like right now I can't even use and put in until we're done with COVID or six months when now I can like take a little bit of a video I've taken and edit it down and put it in because of, of the way that social media is viewed and, and the the other the naysayers, the nitpickers who like to get in there and say, oh, that person isn't wearing a certain, you know, um, PPE like they should be. So all this, you have to look at everything. One little photo I put up, I have to make sure it meets every single criteria. That, you know, it's crazy. It's a crazy field, this social media with the fire service. That's a great point, Melissa. Mithy, I saw you, you, you jumped up. What, you got anything for us, brother? What's going on, Rob? Uh, first of all, thanks for all the kind words early on. I was listening. Uh, like Jeremy said, it does take multiple weeks to get a post out for me, and that's why um, I'm not as consistent as other pages out there. Uh, I do believe in quality versus quantity, but uh, that's not always the case. You know, Some days I just have a good week where I can get three posts in a row because I'm motivated, and then some weeks I'm unmotivated, and I'm off for two weeks even looking at Instagram. So. Um, it's a fine line. You bring up a lot of good points with um, the policies of social media within your job. I find, I think, those departments that have those strict social media policies are starting to see the benefits of social media because they're looking at other people's pages, investigating these people, seeing what they're doing. And not everyone's doing the bad things. Not everyone's posting apparatus accidents or car accidents or um, fires with deaths in them, whatever it may be. So I think by the job is looking into these these pages out there, these platforms, they're starting to realize where they could go with it in a positive sense. So that's also about navigating properly. Um, Jeremy, Rob, you guys obviously know my story. I approached these guys after an event up in Poughkeepsie and I told them, I said, listen, you guys saved my career. And they, and they didn't know what to say. It's the truth. I was in a, in a funk. I had about, I don't know, I was probably in my 17th year and just kind of had like the blues, like still love the job, love going to work. I just wasn't into it as much as I used to be. And I was kind of getting bummed out, not realizing there's a subculture of this job that was going on right in front of me. And Jeremy brought that to light with Rob and it, it, it changed my life, saved my career. And uh, it discovered new parts of me. Like me, I'm not really a go in your face type guy. I was always been a shy guy. Um, that's what Instagram, the platform of going into top four tactics, I could hide behind that name for a long time and get my message out there. So it wasn't about promoting anything other than my thoughts. And over time with Jeremy's encouragement, uh, I kind of came out of the closet, if you will, and started doing some training and getting my name out there. And uh, it's changed my life completely. And so I thank you guys for it. So social media isn't always a bad thing, not always a good thing, but it's definitely a tool for the future of the fire service. And I think that the the bigger departments who are following and we're starting to realize that. Mickey, thank you uh, for all of that. And, you know, I'm, I'm still blown away by that conversation that we had that night in Poughkeepsie. Um, and I want to kind of just touch on one thing, especially with your, your page with Top Floor Tactics and some of the stuff that we've been talking about. One, you know, my, my point in doing this room today was talk, you know, was originally to talk about uh, social media for the fire service and specifically for emergency services organizations. And we've, and I've enjoyed where this conversation has gone. Um, and we've talked about content and putting out, you know, quantity over quality and stuff like that. And that one thing I want to remind everybody, especially for those who are in the emergency services, uh, you know, we're all of this, like, you know, you're a fire department, an ambulance corps, a police agency, whatever it might be, you know, your content, while it is good to have something going up every day or two to three times a day, if that doesn't happen, that's okay. And Mickey, you're in a great example of that with top floor tactics, because like when you talk about, you know, the work that you put into your, your post and how educational are, I mean, I remember at work the other day, we were talking about some of the different things that we can do to make training better. And I was shocked because one of the, one of the guys on my job, that's not really in the social media said, actually, you know, uh, Rob, you, you brought up top floor tactics and, you know, I, I, I've been reading that and I don't know who that guy is, but man, like it's like a, it, like he should really put all that stuff into a book because I, I would want to read that book. So when it comes to that, you know, uh, quality over the quantity, like there is a balance. And if we're not like, we are selling the services that we do, but if we are meeting that, you know, there's, there's a balance, I guess, in between that. And I think you, you strike the balance very well with top floor tactics and the, the quality of what you're putting out. And I think that, you know, I just wanted to touch on that because that is really important for everybody out there to, uh, to understand. Hey, Rob, I just want to hop in and echo something, too, that you you just said, and for myself. 
I, I mentioned it earlier about you never know the impact you have. And being often, you know, authenticity is everything. And you never know at the end of the day who you're touching, who you're impacting, and what comes of that. And I will tell you that Mickey told when 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 I first met Mick and and uh, Mick, I'm gonna make this really short, brother, because I know how you are. But at the end of the day, like you telling that story today, just fired me up again, like no tomorrow, because I never once thought that we would be able to make an impact, like you just said, with our platform. And so you know what that does for me? Not only do I get teary-eyed sitting here and and thinking about that impact. But I also value you as one of my good friends, and we've become strong brothers. And through all of that, it's because of starting a social media page. And so I challenge everybody that has that, and I talked to it before, you never know the impact you make. You never know who you're going to touch on what day. And so I challenge you that when you do put it out, and yeah, Chief Solar, put out quality for sure. Put out quality. Get your message out there. Promote the betterment of this job. And you never know who you're going to impact. Mick, I cherish you like you wouldn't believe, brother. And I thank you for the kind words today because uh, it's just uh, it's one of those things that like it's hard to hear. And it's incredible for me to sit back and have a beer with you and realize what you just said. And it's just it's wild. So I cherish that to the day I die, brother. So thank you. But Rob, good job with the room on social today. This is awesome, brother. Thank you. Thank you for everybody for coming up. I want to close it out and just thank everybody for uh, taking an hour out of the day to come up here and and uh, chat with us on social media for the fire service. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you for supporting us and hopping in these rooms and having a conversation because this conversation matters. It makes a difference. And it's just, this is social media. So get in, do it, be a part of the community. I love it. Rob, good job. Melissa, I got to talk to, is Melissa still in here? I got to talk, I want to talk to her about what's driving fire districts to make social media policies and how do they decide how to make what, in the policy 100 that's, that, that's, that's a good topic that's jake's mom so yeah i know that okay know. so it's good awesome right, I'm out of here. thank that you everybody day, guys see ya hey guys thanks for tuning in this week and listening to another episode on the national fire radio podcast channels We truly appreciate the support. We thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to our interviews, our roundtables, our discussions. It means the world. Like, share, leave a comment. The more we engage, the more we can grow and push the word out and keep making this job better.